He pulled me into his arms. I found myself in his arms a lot this past two months. Harry put it aside and stared out the window. Not Sirius and Remus, not his mother and father. His eyes slide sideways to look at the memoirs lying on his pillow, waiting. Son of a wand, you didn't. He didn't read anymore until after the holidays had passed as he tried to think of another explanation for the passion year. It wasn't that Harry had a problem with any orientation. If it had been Peter, perhaps, or Remus, helping his father, it would be fine. But serious? Cousin? Friend? Lover? Murderer? Harry wondered if he should continue. Jones seemed to be graphic with his writing. The rape, the lunar transformation. How deep will this father go? Or perhaps Harry had it all wrong? Knowing he didn't, he finally picked it up over a weekend, figuring to read the rest of it in one go and get it over with. To top it off, not only had Scabbers gone a wall again, but also Harry himself was now angry with Hermione. Someone had sent him a brand new broomstick for Christmas, a fire bolt. But no thanks to Hermione, McGonagall has conf had confiscated the thing a few hours later on the assumption that it may have come from Sirius Black. Hermione meant well, Harry knew, but how on earth could Black even send him a firebolt anyway? It was unlikely, since the man was on the run. Harry preferred Ron's explanation that the broomstick had come from Dumbledore. To avoid facing Hermione again and get out of listening to her and Ron fight as well, Harry used the memoirs as an excuse to escape. The only thing he had to look forward to was anti-dementor lesson, with Lupin as promised. Now that the holiday were over. He pulled me into his arms. I found myself in his arms a lot this past few months. Jim, if we don't get that fixed, you'll have to go to the hospital, possibly send mangoes. Sirius said softly in my ear. Then the whole story will come out. You don't want that. No, I gasped under breath. After several minutes of silent resistance, I finally gave him what he wanted. What can you do? That's better. Sirius pulled away, but only a little. He pushed me against the sink and then sat cross leg in front of me. Those two cuts look really bad. Yeah. I said, feeling rather awkward, all of a sudden on exactly where he was looking. He finally raised his eyes, on his eyes, to my face. So, tell me, what exactly do you feel, and how long has this been going on? I ate this, admitting my weakness. My chest heaving with dry sobs. I told him quickly in one shot to get it over with. The marks left by Bellatrix still stank. I've never had proper erection since the day, and when I try, it hurts too much to bother with. 
That's called blue balls, Jim. I know what it's called, I said furiously. She probably damaged me permanently. By now, I was crying again, freely. Sirius took my slit hand into his arm. You're not the mage? Well, you are, but I mean, not permanently. I can't love again, I retorted. That's pretty permanent. Got something to fix that? Sirius stared at the infected cuts on my legs. Yes, he said simply, standing up. If you're talking about love potions, I began. No. Sirius put his, put his hands on my shoulders. I raised my own hands to hang on to his arms. I can help you, Jim, but only if you want me to. I could barely speak now. I do. Okay. I'm in love with Remus, he began. I already knew this, so what? You're in love with Lily. No. I shook my head, blinking tears from my eyes. You've been after that girl since we were on the train before our sorting. Sirius disagreed. It wasn't you. It just has to be found again. Then help me! I dug my nails into his flesh. He didn't even wince. Help me find it again! All right, Sirius said. I'd help you find your love again. You help me by teaching me to be monogamous. What? I'm trying to marry a wolf, Sirius pointed out. Okay, I nodded. Wait, what? Just, what is he talking about? Jim, neither of our interests are giving us the time of day right now, Sirius went on. Let me use this time to help you as your friend and family. Sirius, it suddenly slammed into me what he was proposing. It terrified me and must have shown. I will never hurt you. No, of course not, Harry grumbled, hating the fact that he seemed to have guessed right. I mean... Why it hurt him when you can just, oh, I don't know, sell his life to Voldemort? I will never hurt you like that, Sirius murmured. I want to heal you. I said, I will find a way. I stared into his eyes. I felt prongs go very still inside me. My horns came up part way. Sirius laughed at me. Oh God, I cried out. Oh God, Sirius, I don't know what to do. Follow my lead, he said. Trust me. I nodded, mutely. He stood away from me. My hands slid along his arms until they ended up in his. Would you let me take care of that? He looked down for a moment. There are two ways I can go about it. Your choice. What are my choices? I asked breathlessly. I couldn't believe I was actually considering this. I could go sneak out a potion to start healing you, Sirius began. It will take a few minutes. Or I could use Patfoot. That confused me. How? A dog's tongue is very sterile. I stared at him, then it dawned on me. 
and I felt my eyes go wide. Oh, I looked away. He stepped away from me and let me go. It's okay, I won't hurt you, your choice. I pulled my arms in, sinking. Sirius went to the sink, farthest from me, giving me space. We remained silent for several minutes. I watched him, tried to catch his eye, but he pointedly looked away from me. Badfoot. Now he looks at me. Are you sure? I nodded once. He came back to me and pushed me back against the sink. Bronx, I will never hurt you. He knelt down in front of me. This might sting a little, considering. I scoffed at him. I hate you. He smiled up at me. Absolutely sure. I nodded once. Then stared ahead at the showers, not too sure what to expect. I knew I'd feel the wetness of his tongue. I expected the stinging he warned me about. I didn't think I would feel more. How could I? Besides, we weren't doing this as a normal couple would do it for. This was medicinal. Right? So, really, I shouldn't feel anything. He wouldn't hurt me. I was fine. I was... I was... Oh my god. I was in his mouth all of a sudden. I forced my eyes on the opposite wall, letting Patrick lick me. I gripped the sink behind me with both hands and was now looking at the sailing. I suddenly sucked in a much needed breath, which made me trust in Biden, which made me double over with a grunt, my forehead hitting Patfoot's head between the ears. What the hell was that? Serious? I hadn't expected to feel anything. I wasn't supposed to ever again. Sirius was right. It did sting a little. The rough tongue of the grim shaft against the skirts. But I could handle it. After what Orion had put me through, I could handle a few small stings. Beside that which couldn't be helped, Sirius didn't hurt me. I put my head back again, staring at the ceiling. I breathed on more, once more, making me instinctively press down into him for the second time. I felt the pressure building up and realized what was about to happen. I wanted to warn him, but only managed to say his name. Everything felt as if it was in slow motion. I gasped and sank to my knees, then lay onto my side, panting hard. It wasn't until I was breathing normally over a minute later that he let me go. Sirius came into view and lay beside me, holding his head up on one hand. Putting his free hand on my chest, he asked. You okay? I didn't expect to come. Sorry. Try to, to warn you. It's okay. I didn't expect anything less. He lay his head on my chest. After several moments, he added. Took you long enough? Sorry, I managed to say. And like, and like Sirius was been at it like a rabbit since he was nine, I had no real experience with this 
apart from the usual yank of boys do. Oh, right, I can't even do that now. The rape, now this, you know, the usual. Don't apologize, Sarah snickered. The longer, the better. I didn't think that will happen. Sirius raised his head to stare at me. Well, what did you think would happen? I was giving you a blowjob after all. Well, no, not that is all, I said. I didn't think that was possible. See, you are still virgin. He tapped my chest where the heart was. Right here. Serious. Right here. He repeated. He began petting the area on my chest. I felt my heart speed up and wonder if he noticed. He lay beside me again to start at the sailing. It felt different, I suddenly said, from when I used to handle myself. It's supposed to be a different, said Sirius. Wonking off is just to let off steam. Having someone with you is better. Different from your dad, too? I must certainly hope so. I wasn't talking about the part that hurt. I wondered how to explain, then wondered why I had started talking about it. I mean, that one moment near the end, I didn't think I could feel anything with them. I didn't want to try to stop it. Serious step sat up beside me. Now you're feeling guilty for that moment of pleasure in the room. It wasn't even a question. How the hell did he know? I covered my face with both hands before finally bursting out. Yes, serious, yes. Why did I do that? I was suddenly crying again. Sirius pulled me into his lap and leaned over me. You're supposed to. If you had kept that in, that would have really hurt you. It was just your body natural response to survive it. Nothing wrong with that. How would you... Serious? Did he do that to you too? No. He stood up and helped me to stand. I found myself in his arms again and decided I liked being there. James, you are not the first first rape victim I've been with. What? You're my second, Sirius went on. A Opel Poof girl two years ago was really hurt by someone from Ravenclaw. Someone from seven years at that. I helped her. How did that work for her? She's engaged to a nice Ravenclaw man right now, Sirius answered. I drew shaky breaths and leaned on him more. I inwardly smiled at the irony of my situation. Me, a victim of rape, was an almost virgin. Let's just say standing in the arm of quite probably the biggest sex addict in the universe. He was holding me close, pulling me against him. His hands were on my bare hips, holding me in place. His grip firm but gentle. I felt something between us, but wasn't sure what. It took me a while to figure out I was pressed right up against him. It took me even longer to realize that I was feeling him next to me and he was hard as a rock. I considered for a moment if I should pull away, but he made no move on me. I felt safe. 
I was safe. We stood like that for what seemed forever. I had sought for the longest time that any guy with a hard on couldn't control it. Yet, Sirius did nothing about it. I focused on prongs, but if anything, the stag felt sleepy. I lifted my head from his shoulder, feeling sleepy myself. Um, we, we shall go. Okay. He stepped back and looked down. There, see? You're almost healed there. How is that possible? Grims are among, among the most magical dogs in our world. Second only to werewolves. So, if Remus had done this, I'd be fully healed? I laughed. He didn't. Probably. He walked out, leaving me to get dressed and follow. I took my time getting to the bedrooms, partly to dodge the pain and partly to consider what just happened. Sirius was just getting into bed when I finally entered. Peter and Remus were already passed out a long time ago. It was really late. Probably nearly three in the morning. He watched me change into Pajmas, which I found both unnerving and yet rather arousing at the same time. Going to his bed so I wouldn't wake the others, I asked under breath, So, how do we finish healing those cats? It's your choice, Jem. Sirius lay back on his pillow. Badfoot or potion. Good night. He rolled over and went to sleep. Au revoir.